Hello, thank you so much for clicking on my link. My name is Lynn Mazzellini and I am a um, part-time artist, I would say emerging artist, and I'm also a college professor. So I do all my art kind of on the side. Um, it is um, twofold for me. I mean, one, it is kind of like my meditation. It's kind of my daily practice, if you will. But I also do some fine art where I get like very specific about expressing different um, feminine concepts. So I hope you enjoy this. So this is a glimpse of the final result of the little project that I'm demonstrating today. Um, I really had absolutely no plan from the beginning of what I was going to be doing. I made a bunch of gel prints and then I just looked for a color pattern and I just thought, okay, what's something simple that I can do today that's going to be really fun and easy? So I made gel prints. I then glued them into um, my art journal and I used some paint markers and some oil pastels to really jazz them up and make this final result. So here's another idea. Um, you can also transform a children's book into an art journal. Here I'm showing a glimpse of um, a book. It's not that many pages. I don't remember. 10 or 15 pages maximum. And it had sturdy paper, a really nice hard cover, etc. And I just changed, I transformed this book by adding gel prints. I had um, some transparent papers that I was using at this time, added some paint to make it more cohesive, um, some other textual um, collage papers, etc. Um, to have fun with this. Okay, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is just keep in mind that if you're anything like me, this can be a little bit messy. So what I have here on my table is actually, I think it's a silicone play mat. Um, I think it's designed or it's marketed for... Um, for kids arts and crafts and it is fantastic because it's silicone nothing really sticks to it and so I find it really easy to clean up this mat um, when I'm done okay so now I'm just setting out some um, paint um, here I have a soft body acrylic paint from Amsterdam it's very similar to Liquitex basics paint. You can also use craft paint. Um, I have bought those little tiny, um, what is it called, folk art tubes from Walmart or from your craft store. Basically any kind of acrylic paint or even um, acrylic inks can work pretty well on the plate. Just keep in mind that um, um, especially things that are a little bit more aqueous or like inky like um, they're gonna probably spread a lot more on the plate so here I'm just cutting out some paper um, I was thinking about you know making some sort of very simple stencil here um, something that's gonna basically avoid paint from transferring onto my paper and typically when I'm doing these gel prints, I'm really not thinking in a traditional sense. I'm just doing stuff and sometimes things aren't, well, they're not beautiful. <laughs> That's the honest truth. But the nice thing about gel prints is that if I don't like a print, I can just add another layer of paint over it. So it really doesn't matter. I'm just plain. I'm just trying to figure out if I want to use these papers, where I want to lay them on the plate, um, etc. Now, this is a really key point here. I'm putting a little bit of paint onto the plate, and I need to make it relatively thin. If you make it too thick and soupy, it's just going to slip and slide when you put your paper over top of it. And the paper um, just gets a little bit too wet. So the thinner you make it, the better. Um, there is a point of 
um, maybe things being a little bit too thin. And it's really hard to define that um, ahead of time. You really just have to kind of play with it and see, um, see what happens. So I've put my dots on here on top of the paint. That's one way to do it. And now I'm going to grab a sheet of paper. This is just copy paper. It's actually a pretty good... Um, uh, I think it's a HP maybe 100 GSM copy paper which is a little bit sturdier than what I typically buy um, but I would say you know anywhere from 80 pounds to 100 pounds really works great now what I'm doing is I'm actually feeling through my hand um, for the paper to start to get a little bit moist um, um, and then I know that the paint is actually soaking into uh, the paper nicely. And then I go ahead and pull it off. And you'll notice that there's still some paint actually on that gel plate now. And that's actually fantastic because now we're going to have the opportunity to get what's called a ghost print. And I have to say, I really like the ghost prints usually even better than the very first pull. So... That is why I will do layers and layers and layers of um, prints with this. So I'm going to add some pink paint on top of this gray and I've decided to pull out another gel plate just to use to mix it up so I don't smear around the stuff that's on the plate. And then what you're going to see on the top of the print is basically what's on the bottom of the plate. So. I'm going to still keep some of those circular shapes in the print um, that you'll see when we when we pull this. It's not you're not going to see it so much what you see on the top now because that's going to be on the bottom of the um, paint on the paper. So I'm grabbing my sheet of clean paper and I'm going to put it down, rubbing it around, making a really nice contact. I'm kind of um, waiting to sense whether or not the paper is absorbing that paint um, and I don't know how many seconds it is this is actually in real time so I guess um, it's just a couple of seconds and then I'm pulling the paint and this time because the gray paint was on there for a little while while I was mixing up the pink it started to dry a little bit and so um, it stuck a little bit more to the actual gel plate. So I had to use two hands to pull this off. So now I'm going to add a little bit more paint to this. Um, I'm adding a touch more pink here. Um, it's quite thin, what I have. And then I'm going to add a little bit of more green. And now I'm just going for it and I'm adding it right on top of the plate. Um, and I think... I actually put a little bit too much because I just went for it here, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to thin it out with my brayer, um, make a nice thin color or thin layer, sorry, um, and then I'm going to pull a print. And I just decided to put that pattern on top of the previous pattern that I had. I'm not sure that I really love that result, but this is what I did because I just wasn't thinking I just was doing and that's one of the best parts about making gel prints is that you can kind of zone out you could you could do this while you're watching TV or you know you can basically just listen to music um, think through your thoughts for the day etc while you're doing this and just have fun Sometimes the ghost prints, the paints are a lot thinner and sometimes they dry a little bit faster so they can get really sticky. And this is a beautiful example of a ghost print. And you can see some of the circle shapes, even some of the pink paint from earlier. Um, whatever is on that plate, even if it's a ghost image from two or three times before, it can still show up. So I like that. I don't know why, but I'm really drawn to that... Um, kind of happenstance um, characteristic of the gel plate. Um, but if you want it to be cleaner and more perfect, you can go ahead and clean your plate in between every um, layer. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and speed things up a little bit. I'm gonna continue to make um, gel prints here 
and they are going to be, um, again, pretty random as I'm just not really thinking, I'm just doing. Um, one thing that can be really helpful is to pick colors um, kind of ahead of time and just have them um, at your side and kind of like ready to go. And you can pick colors that you know are going to go um, fairly well together. Sometimes I do that um, a little bit more instinctively now, but um, in the beginning sometimes I made some um, bad color choices. And actually this, um, I think this was a little bit of a bad color choice there. Um, but again, you can change the color by adding additional layers um, over top of one another as you go. Um, especially if you use kind of more of a transparent layer that can really help to harmonize whatever you had um, on the plate. So I'm just pumping them out here. Um, that last print got a little bit dark and I can't really see much of a pattern. Um, so I might play with that some more. Um, now I'm using a paintbrush um, and a sponge dabber thing um, to make an interesting pattern. Um, now I'm going to use a different uh, stencil. Pull a ghost image of that. Now I'm using some craft paint here. I mixed in a little bit of green that was on that little um, gel plate and I've got a piece of yarn. And I'm going to pull a first image on a clean piece of paper. And now I'm going to pull the ghost print on one of my other pieces of paper that already had some paint on it. In fact that was from my roller, from my brayer. Now this is really my favorite thing to do is to use um, paper from other books. So I find that these study guides, um, uh, first of all I have some laying around um, and they're really cheap to find at the thrift store and they have a pretty absorbent paper so they can be really great for making gel prints. And so you don't, this is a good example of like you don't even have to buy any kind of fancy paper to make your gel prints. And oftentimes I like a lot more um, some of those book papers, um, especially those um, budget study guides. So here we go with one of those. It was from a calculus book. I'll do another one. And because that book um, really didn't cost me anything. I really have like two to three hundred pages of paper that's, I mean, essentially for free. I don't know if I paid for that book at some point or not. Here I'm doing some other things with, um, I had an old toilet paper roll, um, a plastic fork. You want to be careful. You don't want to dig into the gel plate itself because it is um, it is something that could be damaged if you use too much force. Here I'm just trying to figure out what to do with some of those prints that I didn't really love the color combination. So I just add a little bit of a transparent layer to kind of darken it up. I decided it was too dark, so I'm going to add some white paint. That print didn't come out the way I thought, so I'm going to add some more white paint. Now I have something that has some interesting contrast there. Make a piece of green paper. Also to help clean up the plate, um, you can notice some irregularities in that paper. I love fuchsia. Um, that transparent fuchsia is just so fun. Now that's a roller, um, a sponge roller that I like to make some lines with. That's an acrylic um, ink there, directly into a notebook. And doing both pages for good measure there. Very random. And that paper was very textured, which is what kind of pattern you see there. 
And then finally I took the gel plate and I actually put it into this other book um, because it's pretty portable so you could pick it up and you put the paint onto um, into a book as I had just done there. All right, so now I think I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna start cleaning up and reviewing my papers. Um, probably not happy with all of these papers, but um, at least for the amount of time that I had uh, for this um, demonstration, I have enough. Oh, maybe I wanna use a little bit more of that fun fuchsia. It was a little bit too thick though. So then I decided it was too bright, so I'm going to add some yellow to kind of drop it down a little bit. Use a ghost print on one of those patterns that I didn't like from the beginning. And now I'm going to clean up my plates. So I'm using uh, a mild soap. This is actually baby shampoo. I don't know why I use baby shampoo on these gel plates. They're, um, you definitely don't want to use a strong detergent for them. And then I add a baby oil layer to them because they, um, they need to stay hydrophobic. Okay, so now that we have had a chance to make some gel prints and we're all cleaned up, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got and maybe pick a few to use in the art journal. So with a full disclosure, I will say that at this point, I still don't know what I'm actually going to do with these prints. Um, just letting my intuition pick some colors that um, go together, some pinks and some greens. Um, they have a really nice contrast. Um, I really like that gray-blue with the fuchsia, with the po all the polka dots, but I end up not using that because it doesn't doesn't match necessarily these um, these pink and green ones. So I'm picking a few from these and I'm also picking a few that I really like a lot and I don't want to sacrifice them for today's journal entry. And so now I've got a few here just looking at how they coordinate the patterns, whether or not they go together or not, getting my journal page open and then kind of making a decision, putting some gesso on the paper. Um, this is a very thin drawing paper, so um, it works fine if you add gesso to it or if you just glue the um, gel prints right away on it. The, the thin paper still works fine. I think it's 80 pound paper, so it's actually thinner than the, than the copy paper that I made gel prints with. So now that's a matte medium, which I use as my glue. You could also use Mod Podge or um, gel medium as well. Um, basically, some sort of acrylic binder um, would work to um, stick our papers together. I guess you could also use Yes Paste or any, any other kind of glue that works well with, um, with acrylics and water. Nice, easy water cleanup. So I'm using a page from the Calculus um, study guide, and I actually really like that it has the chapter 16 header there. Rectilinear and circular motion. <laughs> um, and it's actually kind of funny because um, I'm going to have some circles eventually in this, this thing and some other abstract shapes. Um, I'm getting a little messy here. I'm just using my fingers with the matte medium and just applying it directly on top of that silicone mat um, because it cleans up really well. It's it's easy to do that. I'm not worried about about it, and I don't want the text of the of the prior page to be super obvious. So I'm actually purposely kind of covering some of it up. Um, I'm not actually thinking here, but um, so it's hard to say that I purposely did anything, but essentially that was what was kind of um, going through my mind, whether it be 
you know, kind of direct or um, from practice. So there are my circles um, from one of the pink pages. And they are also from the calculus book. So it actually everything pretty much matches right now. All the colors are coordinated. A little bit too matchy matchy. So I'm going to bring in some blue for the background. Um, first a little bit of white. And it seems like my white is a little bit contaminated there. But it's fine. I actually like my art a little bit on the messy side. Um, which is actually funny because my fine art, I, I do... Um, I like to do realism and things like that that are a little bit less abstract. But when I play in my journal, I'm just really trying to be very kid-like. I don't want to get it perfect. I want to use my imagination. This is supposed to be like a 20-minute journal entry, so I'm not going to get very detailed. I even make mistakes. And the mistakes actually don't matter because, in fact, they're too much ink, too much paint came out of one of those paint pens there, so I have to blot it off. This is the final result. Um, I didn't film this part, but essentially what I did is I took out some oil pastels, and I use oil pastels to refine the colors a little bit and add some additional visual contrast. Um, got a couple different greens going on there, some highlights. Um, there's some yellow that I brought in with the oil pastel and then some dark pink and some scribbles. I love scribbles. So that is it. That is my no rules art journal entry. So that is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some ideas. Um, you just play with the gel prints and then cut them or rip them, use them in different ways and just to add some color to your pages and then add more mark making with some oil pastels or, you know, even Crayola crayons, any kind of other drawing material works fine. You could even use pencil at this point or some sort of um, those gel ink pens can be really fun as well. So... Again, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it gave you some ideas and good luck.